everyone, I am Miss Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we will be going through the life cycle of a star from birth to death. This topic is part of the IGCSE physics syllabus, so this video will only be covering the information we need to answer the questions in our examinations. So here's an overview of the life cycle of a star. We need to know the phases of a star from birth all the way to death. We will be going through each part of the process in a little bit more detail in the coming slides, but let's just go through a quick overview for now. The star is formed from a nebula, which is known as a star forming region or a stellar nursery. Once a star starts to be formed, it forms something called a protostar. The next stage after its birth would be the main sequence. So at the main sequence stage, the star is stable and this is the longest part of the entire life cycle of the star. Now what happens next depends on the mass of the star. As the stars enter old age, for low and medium mass stars, the star will form a red giant. And as it approaches death, it will form a planetary nebula before becoming a white dwarf and thereafter a black dwarf. For massive stars, when they approach old age, they will form a red supergiant and then it dies in a supernova explosion. And depending also on its mass, it will either form a neutron star or a black hole. Let's start first with the birth of the star. So when a star is born, it's born in a nebula. So what happens in a star forming nebula is that clumps of gas and dust reach critical mass, causing them to collapse under their own gravity. The compression of the gas and dust increases its gravity until it collects even more material onto itself. This then goes into the protostar stage, where a hot spinning mass starts to form at the center of the gas and dust cloud. The protostar eventually becomes dense and hot enough for nuclear fusion to occur. It is now a star, and at this point, it is a stable star, which is in the main sequence stage. The main sequence star is stable. The stability in this case is due to the equilibrium of forces. There is an inwards force due to gravity, and a gravitational pull exists because of the mass of the star. There is also an outwards force due to the thermal pressure caused by nuclear fusion. When the inwards force is balanced by the outwards force, this produces a force equilibrium, causing the star to be stable. And as mentioned, a stable star is during the stage of main sequence. Now, all stars will convert the hydrogen in their center into helium through the process of nuclear fusion. But eventually, the hydrogen will run out. So what happens next depends on their size. So let's first cover the low and medium mass stars, which on this slide is written as an average star. When an average star runs out of hydrogen, there's no more nuclear fusion. Therefore, there will be no more outwards thermal pressure. This causes a force imbalance where there's still a gravitational pull inwards, but nothing to balance it outwards. This means there will be a continuous force inwards due to gravity, which causes the core to collapse and heat up. The collapsing core may be hot enough to cause some of the helium nuclei to fuse into carbon and oxygen. So as the inner layer starts to heat up, the outer layers expand and cool, turning the star into a red giant. The expansion of the outer layers will form a planetary nebula, while the central core remains as a white dwarf. A black dwarf is formed when a white dwarf cools enough until it no longer emits any detectable heat or light. Now, don't worry, this process takes billions of years. Just a quick note about planetary nebula. The term planetary nebula is very misleading because it has nothing to do with planets. Like a nebula, it's basically just a cloud of dust and gas. Back then, when astronomers were looking at these nebulae, they thought they were looking at giant planets, but it's just a glowing shell of a gas blown away from the remains of a star. Because they look like planets, they were given the name planetary nebulae. Now, let us look at what happens to a massive star. 
So when a massive star runs out of hydrogen, the helium fuses into carbon, which fuses into heavier elements such as oxygen, neon, silicon, magnesium, sulfur, and iron. Similar to the average star, the outer layers will expand, turning the star into a red supergiant. However, you can see that the elements will fuse into heavier and heavier elements, and once the core has turned into iron, it can no longer burn. The star then collapses under its own gravity and the iron core heats up. The core becomes so tightly packed that protons and electrons merge to form neutrons. So if you can remember, protons are positively charged particles while electrons are negatively charged particles. The combination of positive and negative form neutral particles which are the neutrons. In less than one second, the iron core, which can be about the size of planet Earth, will shrink to a neutron core with a radius of about only 6 miles, or 10 kilometers across. The outer layers of the star then fall inward on a neutron core, thereby crushing it further. The core heats to billions of degrees, and then explodes in a supernova, releasing large amounts of energy and material into space. A supernova can take place in merely a few seconds. After the supernova, what happens? This also depends on the mass of the star. If the star is about or less than three solar masses, a neutron star will be formed, while if the star is more than three solar masses, a black hole will be formed. One solar mass is the mass of our sun. You have to remember that when it comes to measurements, we always like to take measurements based on our standards because it's easier for us to comprehend. So for us, our sun is the center of our solar system. That's why one solar mass is the mass of our sun in our solar system. Next, we will go through what neutron stars and black holes are. Let's start first with neutron stars. And yes, neutron stars are corpses. They're dead stars. So neutron stars are formed when a massive star runs out of fuel and collapses. The very central region of the star, the core, collapses, crushing together every proton and electron into a neutron. In principle, a neutron star can live forever as they're one of the final states of a massive star, a star corpse if you will. However, if they have a binary companion, like another neutron star or a black hole, they may merge eventually and create a black hole or a more massive neutron star. For your information, neutron stars are the densest material that we can see in the universe. Neutron stars are so dense that the speed it would take to escape their gravitational influence is half the speed of light. Next, black holes. A black hole is an area of such immense gravity that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. So you have to understand that gravity is a force that pulls things in, and a black hole has such great gravitational pull that even light gets sucked in, gets pulled in, it cannot escape. So what this means is that we can't actually see black holes, because there's no light coming out or escaping from that region. So actually, for the longest of time, astronomers had no idea that there were certain things in certain parts of space, because at those regions, they were actually black holes. So how did they discover the concept of black holes? It is because there were some anomalies or some weird patterns and behavior of certain light and galaxies in certain regions when the astronomers were observing them. So how they managed to find the black holes were by watching the movements of visible objects around them. For example, a black hole's gravity is so strong that nearby stars will orbit around them. So they looked for stars behaving strangely around a patch of empty space. One thing you do need to understand is that a black hole may not actually be black in color. For all we know, it could be extremely colorful. It's just that because we can't see them, we call them black holes because it's like looking into a void. Literally, a black hole from our point of view. So a misconception that some students have is that black holes are black. Remember, they're not. We just can't see them to our perspective. They just look like empty voids that are black in color because they can't be seen. Now, let's cover the formation of new stars. There's a category of stars known as blue supergiants. They're massive stars that are at least eight times the mass of the sun. 
but because they're so massive and so hot, they don't live as long as the less massive stars. Supergiants live for millions, not billions of years, unlike our star which has another 5 billion years to go. In the core helium, nuclei fuse into more massive nuclei, such as carbon, neon, oxygen, and silicon. This releases more energy. There is enough energy in a supernova to produce nuclei more massive than iron. When a supernova occurs, the dust and gas particles are flung into space, forming a nebula known as a supernova remnant nebula. The material from the supernova explosion may eventually form new stars and planets when it collides with interstellar medium, or ISM for short. The interstellar medium is the matter and radiation that exists in the space between the star systems in a galaxy. And that's all you need to know for your IGCSE physics. So if you found this video to be educational and helpful, please subscribe for more free physics lessons and also click like on this video. Help me keep making free educational video lessons and lab practicals. Donations are welcomed at my coffee page at ko-fi.com slash physicsrocks. If you would like access to notes, quizzes, and syllabus updates, please visit my website at physicsrocks.com. Happy studying!